Hello guys. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to teach you how to design a meta lens and the different steps that are involved in designing a meta lens. So let's get started. So these are the following uh, concepts that I'll be explaining in this tutorial. So we'll start with uh, the conventional refractive lenses and diffractive lenses and uh, later on and then we'll move to the working principle of the meta surfaces and then we'll uh, see how we simulate uh, the meta surfaces and then followed by some example design. I'll show you how to fabric how uh, the, the overview of fabricating a meta surface and finally I'll uh, introduce a very useful and powerful software called meta optics. Uh, you can use this software to design meta surface GDS layouts and these layouts can be used by you uh, in fabricating your meta surfaces. Okay, yeah. So what you are seeing here is a uh, conventional refractive type uh, lens. So when you send light through this, so the light, light gets bent at a point which is called the focal point. The problem with this type of uh, refractive index, uh, sorry, refractive lenses, the problem with this, the problem with this type of refractive lenses is that they have uh, some aberrations like uh, chromatic aberration, uh, coma, etc. So in order to uh, make these lenses compact, so Fresnel lenses were introduced. So basically, uh, if you see this lens, so we can divide the lens uh, uh, using, basically if you see this lens, we can uh, divide the lens so that constitutes a phase jump of 2 pi. So actually these small portions, they are not the highlighted portion in the white, so it's not contributing anything to the overall output. It's just giving a uh, 2 pi phase jump. So what we can do is we can just remove all this white region and the resultant lens is called a Fresnel lens. So this Fresnel lens is very uh, compact compared to the bulky refractive lens. And as you uh, already noticed, so light accumulates phase as it travels in a medium and the phase acquired is given by 2 pi by lambda into refractive index into the distance traveled by the light. So uh, this Fresnel lens is very useful and it's very compact but the problem with this uh, type of Fresnel lens is it's very hard to uh, fabricate those you can see these uh, micro structured uh, curved surfaces right. So it's very hard to fabricate these kind of curved surfaces at micron levels. So that's why what uh, people have come up with is further simplify the lens. So which you can see uh, the phase is actually varying from 0 to 2 pi. So 0 to 2 pi and 0 to 2 pi and 0 to 2 pi and so on. So what we can do is we can still further quantize the phase to only just two levels. So the resultant optical element is called a diffractive lens. So here it has only two phase levels so which is 0 and pi. So because of this phase uh, information uh, loss there are going to be some diffraction orders. So even though this is easy to fabricate, but this is very poor in efficiency. So instead of just quantizing this uh, Fresnel lens to two levels, we can actually quantize it to four levels or eight levels. But the problem with such kind of quantization is those optical elements are very uh, difficult, hard to fabricate because they requ require a grayscale uh, resist. Uh, if you know about fabrication, then you'll know uh, they require a fabric, uh, sorry, grayscale resist. And the process is very um, challenging to optimize. So now uh, we have seen a refractive lens and then we have seen a Fresnel lens. We have also seen a diffractive lens which is very poor in efficiency. Now let us see uh, how we can mitigate all these problems with a meta surface. In, on, uh, in order to understand the meta surfaces, first, first let's uh, revisit the Huygens principle. So we all know Huygens principle from high school. So basically Huygens principle says every point on an advancing wavefront acts as a new point source and it starts emanating spherical wavefronts. So let us imagine uh, the surface that I have shown here as an imaginary surface uh, in a medium and imagine these gray dots as some imaginary point sources. So if we send a plane wave through this interface, so these red lines are actually plane waves. So since these are imaginary Huygens sources, so they, they are all going to uh, act as a point sources and then they will emanate secondary wavefronts which we can see in this dashed highlighted wavefronts. 
since there is no relative phase difference between all these gray dots so what i mean by relative phase is so they are all in phase there is no phase different between any of these adjacent or any of them so they are all same phase when they emanate the wave fronts that's why the resultant wave front is also going to be a plane wave but what if we can create some artificial uh, point sources which are not imaginary which are actually real such that we can create uh, we can actually intentionally create some phase difference among these point sources for example in this figure so all of them have different relative phase that's why there is a difference uh, in the uh, spherical waves that have generated so if you draw a tangent to the peak points of all these uh, wave fronts so the resultant is uh, resultant wave front is no longer a plane wave so what we have achieved here is we have converted a plane wave into an ar arbitrary kind of wave so we can use the similar principle and we can create the relative phase such that a plane wave can be converted into a um, cylindrical wave front so cylindrical wave front actually it's nothing but a lens so the cylindrical wave fronts actually will go and converge at the focal point and then make a bright spot so this is the uh, actually the working principle be be behind a meta surface so the problem here is how do we get these real uh, point sources so how can we create and what these point sources and what are the conditions they have to satisfy okay let's just uh, go and see what we can use as a point source so what you are seeing here is a small dielectric cylinder that is made of silicon so what he uh, so here small means as i said it has to be a point source so the dimension of this point source has to be much small compared to the wavelength of the light that we are going to use so this is one uh, unit cell so where there is a cylinder which is placed on top of a substrate and this period uh, should be smaller than lambda for a, in order it to be used as a point source so there are several conditions that needs to be met the first one is the dimension should be close or smaller than the wavelength and the refractive index of the cylindrical structure should be uh, more than 2 it should be a dielectric these are the typical materials that are used in designing a meta surface silicon titanium dioxide gallium nitride recently molybdenum pentoxide is also being used and um, the advantage here is these dielectric materials they don't have absorption losses like silver or gold which are metals so this is a good advantage using a dielectric instead of metals and the resonance that is exhibited by this dielectric is called my type resonance you can read more about my type resonances just by googling or you can find some papers in google scholar so now let's uh, go ahead and then see how we can use these um, dielectric point sources in order to design a meta surface so as i said when we send light through this um, meta atoms or uh, the point sources there is going to be resonance okay and uh, it is going to scatter light in the forward direction so when there is a resonance there are there is an electric field peak corresponding to the uh, resonance interestingly in dielectrics uh, according to the me theory they also exhibit a magnetic resonance but the magnetic resonance act actually happens at a different location compared to the electric resonance for example if electric resonance happens at lambda 1 wavelength the magnetic resonance will happen at lambda 2 so these two are spe not spectrally overlapping but uh, from the first slide we have seen in order to manipulate light so we need we must be able to change the phase of light from 0 to 2 pi because the phase only can take values only in the range of 0 to 2 pi so any phase value that is above or below can be brought back into the range just by wrapping the phase for example 3 pi is nothing by nothing but pi because there is a 2 pi so basically we can just do modulo 2 pi and the phase is always going to lie in the 0 to 2 pi range so we are coming back to the resonances so as i said there are two resonance peaks for dielectrics in the visible or infrared spectrum and the right side figure actually we are showing the transmission phase at these resonance peaks so the left one is field amp electric field amplitude and the right one is the uh, phase of the electric field you can see at the resonance of of these two resonances there is a phase uh, jump of 0 to pi 
and another phase jump of 0 to 2 pi that corresponds to the magnetic resonance. So as I said, we should be able to uh, change the phase of light from 0 to 2 pi in order to uh, do complete wavefront engineering. So we have to find a way how we can get these 0 to 2 pi phase shift from these uh, dielectric resonances. Okay. So luckily there is a way. So we can do this by doing very small things, simple things. For example, we can uh, actually overlap these two resonances by changing the length or by changing the height of this resonator or the radius of the resonator or the orientation. In cylinder, the orientation doesn't make sense because it's circularly symmetric. But if you see other structures like rectangle, so we can just change the orientation and we can get uh, the, the, we can actually bring these resonances together. So why we need to bring the resonances together? Because if you see when the resonances are apart, so we have only 0 to pi and 0 to pi. But actually if we can merge these two resonances, bring these at single wavelength, so these two 0 to pi and 0 to pi uh, will actually merge and we can get a overall range of 0 to 2 pi. So uh, the following animation actually shows the same thing. So as you can see the size of the cylinder is just for illustration purpose. So as the size of the resonator is increasing, you can see that actually the resonances are coming uh, towards each other spectrally and the overall phase adds up to 0 to 2 pi across these wavelengths. Okay. So what is uh, the use here? So as you can see when we increase the radius of this uh, cylinder, so we are, it is actually giving different different phase shifts. So what we can do from here is, so we can do a simulation and find what radius of the cylinder is giving what transmission phase. So we can make a lookup table and we can convert our uh, analog phase profiles into a meta surface. So now I'll just demonstrate uh, that. Before that, uh, I just want to give a brief comparison between a refractive prism, so which is shown here. So when you send a plane wave through the refractive prism, it's going to refract in a direction. So this refraction comes because of Snell's law and there is a phase gradient across this surface because there is a material uh, because light that travels in this uh, path is going to uh, acquire more phase, uh, more phase delay compared to the light that comes from this end. So there is a re resultant shift tilt in the wavefront. So how can we emulate the same effect using a meta surface? So here there is a substrate. And uh, instead of cylinder earlier, now I'm using a cross shape. So we can actually place different sized cross uh, elements. They all have same height, but they all have different X and Y uh, arm lengths. So what happens is they all have uh, a linearly changing phase shift uh, among themselves. For example, this gives a zero phase shift. This will give pi by four and this gives pi by two and so on. So the phase is linearly, the phase gradient is a linear phase gradient varying from this end to this end. So that's why the resultant phase uh, wavefront is also going to be a tilted, which is similar to prism. So the important thing that should be noted here is the prism is a slant, has a slant surface, but a meta surface has a flat surface. So it's very easy to fabricate these kind of surfaces using one lithography step. Whereas it's in order to fabricate this is very challenging with, the, with lithography. What we can people, people usually do is they make a two level approximation, which is a grating. We can also do four level or eight level approximation. But as I said, it's very challenging to fabricate that kind of surface profiles. Okay. Uh, now uh, let's move on to designing, uh, simulating a meta surface. So here I'll briefly explain how do we uh, get the transmission phase and transmission amplitude for a given cylinder or cross shape. In order to do this uh, FD simulation, you require um, an FDTD solver or you should be familiar with what is uh, finite difference time domain method. If you know what is FDTD, you can write your own program to calculate the transmission electric field and transmission phase. But if you don't know FDTD uh, theory, you can uh, have you can have a license. You can buy license software like Lumerical uh, FDTD solver or CST studio. So these are commercial software, they are expensive. Uh, you can buy these softwares and then you can do the simulation. So the simulation process is very straightforward. So we should have uh, some sub substrate to hold our meta surface because the meta surface, as I said, the thickness of the cylinder is going to be of the order of nanometers. 
so we need something to hold the meta surface so in the fdtd software you have to create uh, a substrate usually it is glass or quartz on top of that you have to uh, create a cylinder uh, composed of silicon or uh, titanium dioxide or the materials that i have um, told before so after you create this structure you have to create define an fdtd region where you want to simulate so in lumerical you can define the fdtd region say for example uh, you can define uh, periodic conditions in the x and y direction so what i mean by periodic direction uh, periodic boundary condition is so this partic particular unit cell so what i am showing showing here in the 2d so this is just 3d representation of one unit cell so when we give the periodic boundary conditions in an x and y so what the software actually does is it replicates this unit cell in both x and y so it's going to be an infinite array of same structure and same radius and everything is same but it's going to be an infinite array so we after giving the uh, periodic boundary conditions in the x and y you have to give uh, pml boundary conditions in the z direction so what is PM, pml is perfectly matched layer so what this does is it will stop the electric field coming back into the simulation region it just absorbs all the uh, electric field that uh, goes beyond this simulation region after you do uh, define the simulation region you also have to specify some mesh accuracy uh, depending on how accurately you want to simulate uh, the structure after that you have to define a source so source is nothing but it just emanates a plane wave and for the source you have to specify what is the uh, in fdtd actually it's not a single wavelength source it's going to be a, a broadband pulse it's uh, so you have to specify the starting range of wavelength and uh, end range of wavelength and polarization of the source after you define the source it, it's going to be, you can define plane wave or gaussian or whatever and you have to define a monitor so what this monitor actually does is so it will capture the light that has gone through this uh, meta surface and it will record the electric field and magnetic field of the transmitted wave so once you do this so as i said uh, we need to be able to change the phase of light from 0 to 2 pi so you have to measure so for a given radius of silicon uh, cylinder what is the transmission phase so you just run the simulation and using the monitor settings you can find or you can also use s parameters which uh, for s if you use s parameters the s21 parameter which is the transmission quotient you can just calculate the uh, angle or uh, sorry the phase of this s21 parameter that gives the transmission phase for this uh, particular dimension so after you do this simulation again you go back to the cylinder structure and now you can increase the radius so you can see the radius has increased so after the after you create the new cylinder you again repeat the same procedure again send the light source from uh, bottom to the top again you measure the phase of s21 parameter and you can plot it again after that you increase further and you get another data point and you still further improve and you get another data point so you have to keep repeat repeating this simulation luckily in lumerical there is an option called parameter sweep so where you can define the radius as the parameter and then you can sweep it from minimum to maximum value equally spaced intervals so it will keep doing the simulation until it finishes all the dimensions after you get the data you can see if you are getting 0 to 2 pi or not for example if you are not getting 0 to 2 pi which means the resonances have not overlapped so if the resonances have not overla overlapped you have to actually do an iterative approach so you have to increase the height of the cylinder and then repeat the same procedure like uh, the important thing here is for all the cylinders that you are simulating the height should be same because if the height is different uh, again it it's going to be difficult to fabricate so that just keep in mind so the height should be same you can only increase the radius of the cylinder but after you increase the radius from minimum to maximum and you, if you realize the phase is not 0 to 2 pi you have to increase the height or you have to increase the periodicity and fi fix it as constant and then start increasing the radius so if you do iteratively you will get you will get to a point where you are getting 0 to 2 by transmission phase uh, that is necessary in order to do live uh, wavefront engineering after you do this process so you will get a uh, data curve something like this so this is actually a simulation that i have done for uh, cylinder for visible 633 red laser wavelength so as you can see uh, i have to vary the 
radius of this uh, cylinder from 40 to 90 nanometers in order to get the 0 to 2 pi transmission. Another important thing here is, so not only getting the 0 to 2 pi is important, but you should also get very high transmission amplitude. Uh, the importance with this uh, amplitude, transmission amplitude here is, so if you get 0 to 2 pi and if you get a very bad transmission, for example, like a, a dip here, so some of these uh, cylinders that you will place, they will have very low transmission. So your overall output is going to be not uniform. So when doing simulation, you must make sure the transmission amplitude is also uniform. So in this case, it's like uh, there is only 15% difference uh, across all these uh, differently sized cylinders. So once you finish the simulation and get to this point, now you have to create your meta surface or a meta lens or a meta axicon or meta or whatever, whatever phase profile you want to realize. So you have to convert that phase profile into a meta surface layout. So in this, uh, for this, I'll just give you an example. So you, I, I hope you all know what is a blazed grating. Basically a blazed grating has uh, like blazed structures here. So this is nothing but a prism that is uh, uh, done that is modulo 2 pi. So as I said, we can do modulo 2 pi and bring back the phase to 0 to 2 pi. So this is actually a refractive prism operated with the modulo 2 pi operation. So the phase actually goes from 0 to 2 pi and 0 to 2 pi and so on. And this is the period of this blazed grating. So as, as you can see, this kind of blazed grating is uh, impossible to fabricate with lithography or electron beam lithography. So what we can do here is we can, as I said in the first slide, we can approximate this phase with just two levels, which is a binary grating, uh, which also has a very poor efficiency because uh, the light is going to go in all refraction orders, which is not very good. So here is what meta surface uh, comes to save us. So what we can do is we can quantize the phase that is going from 0 to 2 pi into four levels, like z pi by 2, pi, uh, 3 pi by 2 and 2 pi. And we already have done the simulation to know. So what is the corresponding uh, dimension that will give us the pi by 2 or pi or 2 pi phase from this uh, lookup table. So what we have to do is we have to convert this refractive phase into a meta surface layout. As I said in this example, I have quantized it into four levels and this particular line corresponds to pi by 2. So how I know this dimension again go back to the lookup table and uh, go to the phase pi by 2 just drop a tangent uh, sorry normal here and then you will see the radius similarly you just have to replace all these points with the correspondingly dimensioned cylinders okay we can also do the same thing for um, eight level so in this case we just have to quantize these eight levels and then here we'll get eight 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 and so on so so this is how you convert a uh, you can do the same process for a meta lens also so you can just take a phase profile of a um, Fresnel lens and you can quantize it into 4, 8, 16 or whatever. After you quantize, you just go to each pixel and you know what is the phase there. Use the lookup table and then you can create the layout. Creating layout actually is not as simple as you might think because in a typically sized meta surface, for example, if you are um, uh, creating a blazed grating of size 1 millimeter by 1 millimeter, so for this particular example, the period, so the period between these two adjacent um, cylinders is 250 nanometers. So 250 nano, if you divide 1 millimeter by 250 nanometers, it's going to be 4000 by 4000 cylinders in one grating. So 4000 4, by 4000 is 1 million, so sorry, 4 million. So you cannot simply open a GDS tool and then start creating these um, cylinders one after another. Maybe it may be simple in the case of grating because it's less repetitive. But what if you have some more complex phase like a lens? You just cannot simply go to each location and then create a um, cylinder, right? So we need an automation. So we should be able to write a program, for example, using C++ or Python. So where we should import uh, this phase profile and this particular lookup table. And it should be able to generate the GDS layout. We need a GDS layout because without that we cannot... Uh, proceed for the fabrication process. So this is a typical layout for this particular example. You can see we have four differently sized uh, cylinders in repetitive manner. So this is how we have to create um, 
this GDS layouts. Okay, and uh, I'll give some other insights into the design process. So for what I'm showing here is the phase of one blaze going from zero to two pi. So as I said, we can do uh, eight level quantization or uh, four level or two level. Okay. So what is the difference? So what do we what do we get? Uh, by doing four level and what do we get by eight level and what do we get by just doing two levels okay so in this case let us say if you are doing eight level quantization so we have eight phase levels and eight differently sized meta atoms correspond corresponding to the eight levels okay we can also so in this case one each pixel in your meta surface is going to be a cylinder that corresponds to a given phase level okay so we can also do a four level quantization so here uh, we are we have only four levels but we have to fill this region with two meta atoms of same size because this period is same right so the period from here to here is constant in order to fill the entire period we should have uh, two meta atoms for each in the 2d direction if you see 3d each pixel is going to have two cross two meta atoms of same size okay and if you can also do as i said two level quantization in two level quantization you have only two phase levels but here for each pixel there are going to be four cross four same sized meta atoms okay so what is the difference here so what do we get by four or eight or two levels so as i said eight level gives you obviously a uh, very high efficiency so you would want to go with high levels but there are some trade offs okay so let us consider a blaze grating of uh, dimension 1 by 1 uh, millimeter square and in this case all the three uh, methods have same area grating and let us see what are the things that happen if you use 2 8 and 4 so the period of uh, the meta atom this period or the lattice constant is 250 and it's same for here also this period is 250 and again here it's 250 so what differs is the pixel size so the pixel size here is 250 nanometer here it is 500 nanometer here it is 1 micron okay so you can clearly see as we go from 8 level to 2 level we are compromising on the phase resolution here we can change the phase of wave front of the at the at the resolution of 250 nanometer so if you look at uh, uh, if you are familiar with um, these uh, liquid crystal uh, lcos type uh, uh, devices where you you have a uh, few pixels and you can apply your phase profile and uh, based on the electric voltage do you apply to the electric liquid crystal you will get a different uh, phase transmission so if you look at the typical lcos devices the pixel pitch is going to be 10 micron so compared to 10 micron 250 nanometers is like 40 times order of magnitude smaller so obviously with meta surfaces you can get very high phase resolution if you go with one cross one for each pixel so what if you are going away from 8 to 4 and 2 so your phase resolution is going to reduce okay but there is an upside for this so as i said high resolution to low resolution but if you are designing a meta surface gds layout with this eight levels so you are going to have 16 million 4000 by 4000 is 16 million elements but if you go by 2 2 cross 2 so the number of pixels is going to be 4 million if you go with 4 cross 4 the pixels is going to be 1 million so what is the difference from 16 million to 1 million so when you create the gds layout this is what happens so if you create a gds lay layout with eight levels you will get a file size of 600 mb and with 4 uh, cross 4 you will get a 6 mb output file okay so what is the significance here is if you have a 6 600 mb file you just simply cannot load this file into your lithography computer because it has a limited amount of ram when you try to uh, load this this big file into it it simply crashes okay so so it's always a trade off okay between the resolution and how many uh, pixels you can have per phase resolution so this is just i hope you understand uh, i think everybody should consider this these metrics when designing a meta surface and finally i'll briefly outline uh, the fabrication process so we have a silicon we start with the silicon substrate and then we have to deposit the silicon material which is going to be our device layer so where we carve out the cylinders 
so after you do the silicon deposition so you have to do a lithography step where we uh, use the gds layout that is created in the previous uh, slide and then we uh, expose the with electron beam lithography because with photolithography you cannot achieve resolution of nanometers so you have to go with electron lithography but if you are designing the meta lenses in the higher or longer wavelengths for example infrared or far infrared where um, the minimum uh, cylinder size is also going to increase for example for visible 630 nanometers we are talking about 100 nanometer silicon uh, cylinder diameter if you go to 10 micron wavelength the silicon also will scale up and it is going to be uh, 4 micron or 5 micron in diameter so 4 micron 5 micron can be easily fabricated with photolithography so which is also faster compared to EBL much faster so based on your um, minimum feature size you have to de decide the fabrication step so here I am just showing for EBL so that's why we use PMMA resist so after you coat the resist you expose with EBL using the GDS layout and then we have to deposit chromium because we need to etch right we, know, we, the, we have to get the height of the cylinder right because in simulation we get we have to fix the height and lattice constant and everything and you also have should have to replicate the same dimensions otherwise you will not get the same result okay so for this you have to deposit a chromium layer after de you deposit chromium you lift off uh, so that you leave these small chromium cylinders on top of that so you use these small cylinders as an etch mask and you do a reactive ion etching so what this does is so it removes the silicon uh, in places where there is no chromium on top so finally you will get your final meta surface device after etching the remaining chromium so this is the typical fabrication process so there are other variations also so it, you can find literature about fabrication of meta surfaces so i'll just uh, briefly summarize the overall flow first we have to have a phase mask design so what i mean by phase mask design is it can be a, a phase a profile of a lens or a blazed grating that i've shown or it can be anything else okay first we should have a phase mask and the second thing is we should have meta atom design so what is a meta atom design we should have the lookup table that i have shown so what dimension is giving what transmission phase and what is the height and what is the periodicity what is the material so all these things comes under the meta atom design okay and the next step is converting the first phase mask into a gds layout this we use for the next step which is fabrication so if you see here there are two bottlenecks in designing a meta surface so the first step is very easy so you can use any programming language uh, and mathematical expression to calculate the phase profile you, you can generate bmp or jpeg files of the phase in grayscale or color whatever but in order to do this meta atom design you should be familiar with fdtd or uh, you should have an expensive li license for an fdtd solver without this you cannot simply design this you can all uh, if you don't have this if you are lucky you can find some designs from literature but if you for example if you are working with the wavelength which has not been already reported in literature you have to do it by yourself okay so this step is going to be expensive and also as i said the design process and simulation process is not straightforward so you have to keep iterating until you get the 0 to 2 pi transmission across and also you should get high transmission amplitude not just 0 to 2 pi so this uh, iterative optimization is going to take a lot of time typically from a week if you are experienced if you are a beginner it can take maybe a month because running this FTT takes a lot of time so so these are the drawbacks of this step and the next step is again layout so you have the phase mask and you have the meta atom design so how are you going to convert uh, the phase design into a layout right so you, sh you cannot simply open a layout gds tool and start creating these cylinders at different pixels right because there are going to be millions of them so you should have you should have some library of you should have some expertise in pro programming so that you can automatically convert these phase profiles into layout so another problem again is the large file size as i've said before so you cannot load like 1 gb or 500 mb files into your lithography system so what i have done is i have created a software called meta optics so which actually bypasses these two steps from the designer so the basically the designer has to design phase mask and uh, that's all he can be able to create the layout right away from the stop software and you can use the layout 
and you can fabricate if you have the facility or you can send it to your foundry and they will fabricate the device for you. So this is uh, the typical design process in a meta surface. Now I will um, show you the meta optics software. How you can sim very sim um, it's very easy and straightforward. You can design any meta optics layout very easily. So first you have to go to uh, have to download the software. So I am typing the URL for the download link. So it's in our uh, group website. Actually, I am a student of uh, uh, IIT Madras. So this is our group website. So you can log into this website and you can go to this tab, facilities and software. So here you can see the software that we have developed. So you can find the meta optics software and then you can click the download so it just asks for the information of the user so you can start filling the all these mandatory fields and then you will be able to download the software so for you I have already um, downloaded the software so this is the software this is a simple uh, single e executable file you can just click it it takes a um, few seconds 20 seconds so just be patient sorry I uh, closed it Yeah, so this is the software that I have mentioned. So when you open the software, you, you can see the instructions on how to use this software. So these are the sev several steps that you must uh, follow. So you know to start the design, you have to click next. Okay. So here we have already provided several uh, the data, the lookup table data that I have shown before. So this is the Yeah, so we have already provided this lookup table data for several wavelengths and visible and infrared and terahertz regimes. So if you find the wavelength that you are looking for here, you can just simply click it. But if you don't find this wavelength, so there is an option for you to upload it. So you can click the button and go to this page. So in the software, we have provided uh, support for three different geometries. So one is cylinder and second is cross, so this shape and also fin. Okay, so these are the most popular um, geometries used for meta surfaces so if you find the uh, correct data for your uh, desired wavelength from literature so you can just take this look at the plot here and you can use some plot digitizer to get the data the 0 to 2 pi and transmission data so once you uh, have the data so you just have to cylinder geometry for in this case i am just selecting cylinder so you have to mention what is the lattice periodicity for example in the example i shown it was 250 nanometers so you have to enter the period and you have to enter the height so even though it's not uh, relevant in creating a gds layout you have to en enter the height and wavelength that you are working with and for example if you're using with the cross shape you also have to enter the um, width because in this case of cross width is fixed and length is going to increase uh, as a function of 0 to 2 pi and in the case of this um, fin shape so you have to enter both width and length which are constants and the orientation angle is going to determine the transmission phase. Usually it's the theta, if theta is the orientation angle, the transmission phase is going to be 2 theta. Okay. So you have to uh, upload the uh, data in the first column, you have to mention the dimension. For example, for cylinder, uh, first column should be radius in nanometer and the second column should be phase in uh, degrees. It should not be in radians. And after that you can just click the import data button because here I have not uh, selected the period, it's giving an error. 
we can enter some relevant numbers and after that I should be able to import your data so you can just go to your excel sheet and then you can import okay after you import you have to go to the next step but in this case since I am not showing any data I am just uh, selecting the inbuilt data which is 633 nanometers just click next so after you click next it will show the interpolation of your data for example if you have chosen to upload your own data so it will again it will do the interpolation for your data and then it will show a curve if after you upload the data you have to make sure the interpolation actually matches with your expectation but if the interpolation doesn't work correctly your gds file is going to be wrong so you in order to improve the interpolation you have to uh, give more number of points in the excel sheet or uh, more uh, accurate points for example if the curve is having more change in a particular range so i have to try to provide more points in that range so that the interpolation will actually work well so after you are satisfied with the fit so you go to the next step so here is where you applied your uh, face profiles so if you already have a face profile in grayscale png or uh, image file so here actually you can select how many unit cells you want per one pixel which is nothing but this slide so how many uh, pixels you want to represent okay two or four or eight so you can uh, currently i have provided option until six cross six um, you can select any of this and you, you also have to because you're going to be uh, uploading a grayscale image you have to select how many number of phase levels you want to quantize it into so currently it supposed and uh, supports until 16 levels so you can select eight or whatever and you should specify in the grayscale what is the minimum phase and what is the maximum phase for example your you know rock optical element the phase may not be varying from 0 to 2 pi right so for this you have to specify what is the range of the phase in your grayscale for example if it is 0 to 200 so you have to change the intervals from 0 to 200 so whatever minimum and what is maximum so if you are designing a circular optical element so you have to apply this uh, otherwise so in the what usually the image file is going to be a rectangle or square right so if your optical element is circle so the software actually creates um, cylinders of zero phase in, in the you know extremities of the circle so to avoid it you can just simply click circular aperture so if you don't have a phase profile for example if you want to design a Fresnel zone lens so the software comes with some inbuilt functions so SPP is parallel phase profile axicon is axicon for generating bezel beams so i'll show a Fresnel zone lens so you have to enter the parameters so what should be the focal length of the parameter of the Fresnel zone lens and uh, uh, for example if you are designing fzl with uh, 10000 micron or just uh, mm focal length and what should be the diameter so you can give uh, whatever 250 micron as your diameter and if you click the generate button it will show the face profile of lens okay uh, you can just change different parameters like if you want only 5 mm focal length you can again it will change the face profile okay so here we have selected eight phase levels and four cross four uh, meta atoms for one phase pixel and after you select all the correct parameters just click uh, next so what this step does is this quantizes the phase into eight levels and it shows a summary of all the design on the right side so what is the wavelength and what is the uh, how many uh, unit cells in pixel uh, unit cell periodicity all those details so once you are satisfied with all these parameters you can just click so generate gds select a folder and give a name to it so it will start creating the gds layout after it finishes it will show how much time it took and what is the final size so we have created it on the desktop i'll just show what happens to the final gds you can just view the gds file in um, any of the gds viewing software like linkad i'm using klayout so this is the final layout you can just zoom in yeah if you zoom in a lot so you'll see all these circles okay and in this we have actually used uh, eight le levels right so we'll have eight differently sized cylinders inside this okay so in this way you can create uh, gds layouts for any kind of face profile so you can change it to axicon and give the corresponding uh, parameters and then you can click the generate so it will create the axicon phase 
after designing a spiral phase you can give the charge and again the diameter and click on it and it will generate the phase and you can change the number of phase levels and it will quantize it into 16 so this is how uh, you generate different layouts again it's very fast yeah uh, i will also give you a reference so if you actually don't have uh, design files the ftdd files if you could not find them in literature i have created a github uh, page so you can actually the code for this software is also available on the github so actually you can go to github uh, this is my profile so this is the project for that so inside if you go to this project so there are two branches in git one for python 2 and another for python 3 so based on which python you have installed you have to select that branch and you can download the source code so the source code in the src file and this folder is of importance for you so here i have already compiled uh, data for several wavelengths the excel files so you can simply uh, search here the if you are looking for a particular for example 1330 which is not there in the software but you can uh, you know you can click the text file and it will show the uh, uh, different parameters and the height material which are necessary and also i have given the reference where i have taken the data from so you can check out uh, the github page for this software if you if you are interested so that's it so this is how you uh, design a meta surface i hope you guys uh, learned something and uh, i hope you understood how to design a meta lens so if you have any questions or comments you can comment below in the comment section thank you